Our guest this week is Lindsay Schoolcraft, a solo vocalist and keyboardist who, from what I gather, plays a wide range of other instruments as well, the harp, electric, cello, etc. Uh, Lindsay's currently the keyboardist for the very popular British black metal band Cradle of Filth, with whom she also provides backup vocals. Her new song, Fading Star, a decadent display of all things eerie and beautiful, features Danny Filth and is a, it's a, an amazing display of her vocal range. It can be purchased along with uh, her other unique works at schoolcraftmusic.bandcamp.com. Thanks for agreeing to participate in the interview, Lindsay. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Your unique style of music, which is, it's it's kind of difficult to categorize. I mean, you could fit it into uh, all different sorts of categories, uh, instrumental, dark, uh, goth-like. It's very different from the faster, heavier stuff that Cradle do. Um, you just wrapped up a, a European tour. So how is it performing with them and changing, changing up your style of music, so to speak? Um, when it comes to performing with Cradle of Filth, it's, it's, it was a challenge in the beginning when I was hired about a year and a half ago to do the world tour. I was very nervous. I had never actually properly played heavy metal or extreme heavy metal or anything like that beforehand. I was more experienced with wow. um, heavy rock and uh, kind of mainstream musical theater or a rock opera type stuff so it was a uh, it was a new experience for me it really forced me to be a better musician and trained my ear a lot better than it was before so it was um in the beginning it was kind of uncomfortable but now it's just a very natural thing if anything cradle filth has helped me practice my performance skills as a as a performer so uh it, yeah. it, it was a place to be uncomfortable but it was also a, pay, uh, a place to grow yeah, well, you've been doing the schoolcraft thing uh, far before you re- recruited in the ranks of Cradle of Filth, yeah, right? Yeah, at least, uh, oh God, a good two, was it two and a bit years? I, it, was, well, it was quite a while, but I mean, I'm a, I've been a musician my whole life, so like, it's, it's just an ongoing process. I just finally got the chance to do it on a, a large scale professional level. Yeah, exactly. Um, which kind of leads into another question I had. Uh, how exactly do you get picked up by Cradle of Filth? You didn't just fill out an application, I imagine. I mean, how, do, how does that work? Um, well, what happened was, is they had a previous keyboard, uh, a keyboardist, and she had to leave. Um, she had other things on the go, uh, and it was kind of last minute from what I remember, so they were kind of scrambling before and after Christmas. They're like, oh, crap, we have to find somebody to fill the spot, and if we don't, like, we we can't do, uh, we had a North American tour at the time, which did fall through, but we also had a world tour coming up. It's like, shoot, we can't do any of this, and kind of everybody's it's everybody's paycheck right you know um yeah. live performance is one of the last few revenues where you can make money in this industry so they exactly. were searching scrambling and they actually got in touch with my friend melissa furlack um and she's a well-known opera singer in the metal world uh and she was asked to do it but she said she just couldn't because of her uh situation at the time so then she put them over to me and they they were more than willing to give me the spot and i was i was shocked i was honored i was kind of like oh, crap, like, I have to really up my game. But, yeah, it, it was all over, you know, good old social media and Facebook, and it, it, wow. that was part of it. I just kind of branded myself and put myself out there, and they needed a, a goth girl who was in the metal who could sing and play piano, and lo and behold, came into the mix. Yeah, I, I've, I've, I've seen them live so many times. I've, I've been a Cradle Filth fan for probably about 15 years now, cool. and uh, went and saw you guys at Amnesia Rock Fest. Uh, oh, great, and, great. And I have to say... Uh, and with all sincerity, I've seen them so many times, and, and I've seen the backup uh, uh, vocalists that they've had, the keyboards, and uh, you definitely are the best one so far in terms of being well-rounded, enthusiastic. But it's got to it's got to be an odd feeling to to fill someone's someone else's shoes in that role or high heels, I guess. Thanks. In this, yeah. This case. Yeah. It was it was kind of scary at first. I mean, um, my brother is actually in the same place as me right now. He's listening in on this. He was the one who introduced me to Cradle Filth, and then I totally didn't like it in the beginning but I always thought yeah that, you know it's an acquired taste you got to warm up to it but Definitely. I always thought that Sarah just built up a and uh yeah. Ashley and Rosie and Caroline like they did a great job so it was intimidating in the beginning to fill those shoes I was really scared because I was like oh man you know and they, they do say like it's in every genre of fans that metalheads can be a little elitist and pret- pretentious and uh, a, a little okay a lot um holy shit yeah, it, There's... so you know i was worried about the backlash and in the beginning some people said some not so nice things but yeah. i just kept doing what i felt was best for the music and best for the band and i think that's kind of persevered i always have cool. that argument with, with people as well you know uh well you know this band's a real black metal band uh, uh this band isn't a yeah. real black metal band it's like, how do you even, 
what does it matter? There's so many categories to throw something into. What what does anybody define it as? So no, nobody can just sit back and, and enjoy music anymore. It just seems like you have to, you know, be part of a, a subculture of, of, in some some respect. But uh, yeah, and I mean, I I've always been a fan of black metal. I like bands like Doom of Burger and Balfour and yeah. Immortal. And um, I know there's a newer wave of black metal, but when it comes to Cradle Filth, I don't really consider it black metal. I understand that Dan can do a bit of that froggy voice that comes with the black metal vocals, but yeah. I think we're more of like a gothic extreme metal band with a lot of punk influence. And that's yeah. not going up and be like, oh yeah, black metal. Like that's not my first thought when we step on the stage. Age is like, oh, we got to be this grim black man. I don't really. No, I mean, you, you can. And, and people have always said that over the years, Cradle Filth is a very unique uh, entity. Well, yeah, I, I guess a big difference is you're allowed to look like you're enjoying yourself on stage, uh, yeah. as, a, as opposed to you know some yeah, some definitely. some old Nor- Norwegian black metal bands who uh, have to look like they're in pain constantly. Given that, yeah, do you have any... super grim or <laughs> yeah, just really depressed. Um, <laughs> do you have any plans to take your your solo project on the road eventually, or absolutely? What's the deal with that? Um, yeah, yeah, for for the meantime, I mean, um, everything is becoming so busy with Cradle of Filth right now that I actually have to put my own solo stuff on hold for a little while, which was kind of a really hard decision for me to make because I've written almost I've written so much music for it, and I'm ready to launch it and I'm ready to go, but it's not the time right now. Cradle Filth needs me, and I need them, and we're going forth with a new album that we're going to start recording in November. So um, eventually Schoolcraft will come back. It's very uh, it's very different. It's very like Nightwish meets Apocalyptica, but it's very influenced by Andrew Lloyd Webber and rock yes. opera. So with that, um, it is very different than what Cradle Filth is doing. Uh, but eventually I do want to go back on the road with uh, Schoolcraft. I, I miss it. Um, but I, I'm hoping that when I do come back on the road with Schoolcraft, it'll be like a major, a major full-length production thing like Cradle Filth is where instead of playing like the nightclubs, which I'm grateful. I, I don't mind playing nightclubs. I enjoy it. But it's fun. Exactly. But you, um, you hope to progress beyond that, right? Yeah, I want I want people to hear my music. Like I hope they like it and enjoy it. And I really just want to, as a performer and as an artist, I just really want to put my artwork out there and give it my all and express it in the way I can with Cradle. So um, the greatest feeling on the face of the planet is going out there and knowing everybody's there to see you and support you. And, and it's not saying that... I, I don't have that with Schoolcraft. I do, but it, since it's still on a smaller scale, there's also yeah. a lot of skeptics that come out, and they're kind of standing there, like, not judging you, but, but they're not sure if they're really into it yet. And that, that can kind of change the mood of performing. I still try to give it my all, but... And I understand there's always skeptics and people judging, no matter what, but... especially yeah, you try not, to get, try not to get discouraged, right? <laughs> no, no, you know, but I'm hoping that eventually it will get to that point. But well, only time will tell the tale. I mean, pretty much what I have to do right now is just focus on Cradle of Filth. And I have been, and I'm not yeah. saying I'm unhappy. I'm very happy with it. So I, I think there's there's definitely a, a huge market for uh, uh for for the type of music schoolcraft is out there. Um, <laughs> I mean, because it, it, it kind of fills the, the, a gap between you know a few different genres of music, and uh, I don't know how else to put this without you know insulting anybody else. But you know, a lot of people can play <laughs> guitar, and a lot of people can sing, but your your vocal range is unique. Um, and somebody who does it in, in that uh, with that type of music, you know, it's uh, you, you don't you don't come across it too often where it's done very well. So I think there definitely is a massive market out there. And, and when you're done with Cradle of Filth, uh, or you know, just just done recording with taking them, taking a break, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. When you take a break with them, uh, I, I think it's gonna be very very good for you. But at the current time, uh, I know Cradle's currently wrapping up writing their new album. Um, from what I've read, you've had contributive input on the creative process of that, correct? Yeah, definitely. It's, it, I'm kind of like, some days I'm like, it's stressful, and I'm like, oh man, I have so much to do, and some days I'm taken back, and I'm like, holy crap, I can't believe I'm a part of this. So, uh, yeah, know, it's, it, sorry, go on. <laughs> oh no, I, I don't know, I don't know why I cut you off. No, You're no, just... it's okay, I was just saying, it, it happened kind of back world tour, and I, one night we got to the hotel, like, pretty early, but it was time, almost time for bed, and it, we were so chaotically into the world tour that um, I, me and Danny didn't have a chance to get to know each other or talk or anything. So he just said, hey, do you want to just join me for a drink? And we talked and I uh, showed him my solo stuff and he was really impressed by it. And he's like, well, why don't you, you know, when the time's right, why don't you come right on the next album? And I was like, oh, okay, like, geez. Holy shit. Like, yeah, they're just kind of like, what? And, you know, things kind of had to progress. We had a, a, a member change up and everything. And, um, mm-hmm. Everything for the best, all the best between everybody, and it's just, you know, a way of moving forward, and 
And then Dan found out that I played the harp, and he so wants that on the next album because it kind of feels it goes back to the old style and sound. I know there's a harp intro on like old tracks from Principal. And, yeah. And we want to kind of go back to that into the best way. I mean, I understand we're not the original line up anymore but we're all for the most part fans of that and we understand how that works and we just want to give our best to contribute to it and dan believes in us and dan wants us so you know if danny wants it then we are going to work our hardest to do it and he trusts us and we trust him and it's, it's a really nice um setup right now i mean it's the strangest thing because we're writing over like email and dropbox and and you know oh, we God. do see each other in person yeah and you think like it's a mess and it's malfunctioning, but actually we're making it work because we're so dedicated to... You ha- you'd have to be. You're, you're a world apart. Yeah, we are. I mean, I live the farthest away. I hate it. Like, I between festivals this summer, I spent time with our bassist, Dan Firth, in Scotland, and we worked on rehearsing together and writing together. And he was just saying, like, we were both saying, maybe it was just me just saying, I don't remember. I don't want to misquote him, but, like, it was... <laughs> <laughs> no, that's an inside thing. Um, but um, he whatever who said it it's just so nice to be able to rehearse together and to be able to write together because we live so far away Dan Firth is all the way in Scotland and I'm all the way in Canada and I believe Ashok and Martin live about a 30 minute drive from one another and and Danny and Richard are pretty close to one another in England so um we're all scattered across the globe but we still come together and make it work and I had a local band recently ask me about like how do you guys do it and I'm like, well, you know, a lot is at stake and we have a, a name to live up to. And, and it's it's our livelihood. It's not like it's just like we're not a hobby band and we're not saying the local band was. But it's it's a whole different. Oh, exactly. Level, so. They're arguably one of the biggest uh, metal bands to come out of Britain. I mean, or England. That's enough of me trying to sound like Walter Cronkite. I'm, <laughs> I'm a huge I mean, I'm a huge fan. So I got to ask, how would you describe the new album? So far from what's written, I know you guys are trying to go back to, uh, you know, re- yeah. revert back to some of the older I stuff. I can't even say, you know, and I'm not, I really shouldn't. I want Dan to be able to tell the, the world and tell the public because it's his baby and it's his band. But we have yeah. stated that it is kind of going back to the older sound. But you can't fully go back to the older sound just because we don't have the recording equipment we did back then to give it the old kind of tarnished feel, which is, yeah. I crave it. I mean, God, my favorite, yeah, that, my favorite that band, raw sound. Is, yeah, my favorite band is Evanescence, but I like all the old demos where it just sounds like so hollow and tinny, and, and yeah. I, you know, and I know that's what old Cradle fans are wanting and expecting to crave, but I don't think the production is going to be like, unless you know we full of Varg and like recorded on a Fisher Price recording unit, which exactly. we wouldn't, and like it, our label would just disown us immediately. We can't do that. <laughs> yeah, in somebody's garage. Yeah, yeah, you know, we could go back to that, but um. Uh, it's in the. It's so early. It's in the demo stages. I really don't want to give too much away, but um, I'm excited. You know, the thing is, is everybody's excited about it, and I'm. It, you know, I I can't go into too much detail, but I'm really proud of the guys. I'm really proud of Danny and Martin because they're the veterans of the group, and they're so talented and they're so brilliant. But I'm also really proud of the new guys coming in. Well, I guess Dan Firth isn't necessarily new. He was on Manticore and other horrors. Um, but mm-hmm. the two new guitars came in. Everybody is just giving their all and their fully raw talent, and they're putting it forward, and that's exciting. As an insider, can you tell us something about Danny Filth that might surprise us? I can tell you tons of things. <laughs> he really is who he is. I mean, he, he like there's no there's no gray area. Like what he says he is on in his interviews is uh, what he is. I mean. I, I, I give the man a lot of credit. I think he's a fantastic performer. He's a great vocalist. He's really good at makeup. He really, um, I'm really impressed. Like, he, we recently yeah, did... His zombie makeup. Yeah, he did that when we opened for Marilyn about two weeks ago, and that makeup just blew me away. I mean, it took him, like, two hours, but, oh, anything that would actually shock you, no, he is what he is, and there's no hidden secret, um, truly. I, I, <laughs> I, I read a post uh, he wrote today on uh, on Facebook saying that, um, when you guys were opening for Marilyn Manson, I guess uh, Danny was standing on the sidelines and Manson called him out on stage. What was that about? Yeah, you know what? It was weird because I was down in the uh, audience with Dan Firth and Richard and we were watching Manson and just like having a drink and talking. And we never actually saw this transpire, which was weird. I mean, we didn't drink that much, so we remembered everything, <laughs> I, which was strange. But apparently uh, from what Dan said, he was side stage uh, hanging out with uh, Christina from Lacuna Coil. And then Manson just kind of pulled him on the stage and kissed him on the forehead. 
and said like I love you, I love you man or something like that. Oh and god. Apparently that's like squashing that that eight to ten year beef they've had between one another. Which wasn't I don't even think that was a real beef on Danny's part. No, it was just Manson being Manson, and that's fine. Um, yeah, he thinks I, I think he thought that everybody who wore makeup and had long black hair was trying to impersonate him. Yeah. You said it. I'm not. I'm not. I didn't say it. You said no. it. No, oh, I don't um, know. I think everybody knows that. Yeah. So you know, he kind of took a shot at Dan back in the day, uh, but yeah, they squashed it. But like, that's the thing. It's just like, dude, like, it took you how many years, and you wanted to do it publicly. Like, you had the guy's email. Why didn't you just? <laughs> you know yeah. I well, mean? <laughs> well, you know, it, it it looks better sometimes like that. It's only for. Uh... I don't know. I guess you judge the sincerity of it when it's done in that way. Yeah, right? and but. I think Manson really wanted to get it out of the way, so it was it was pretty hilarious. But it's nice that you know I think I don't think Danny has any beef with any celebrities now whatsoever. So, no, I just, I think he really would care. No, he doesn't. He's not like oh what the hell. So um no you know clean slate for Dan, clean clean slate for Manson. Um but no we had a great time. We, it was an honor to open for Manson and, and it was really cool to perform with Lacuna Coil. I've known about them forever. I can really wrap my head around it. Uh but yeah, Dan I'm sure will tell the story in upcoming interviews. That's just the gist of it. So we're gonna play a uh, uh, fading star. Could you uh could you give us a, a bit of a, a background on that song? I mean you wrote the whole thing, mm-hmm. correct? Yep. Um, is, is there anything else about that song that uh, that you'd like to say? Yeah, um, the song itself. Um, I'm one of those people that I do I do go through these experiences in my life where um, things, times get hard and and people need me. And uh, what yeah. happened with Fading Star is when I came into Cradle of Filth, Dan was going through his own stuff. Uh, everybody goes through dark times, and yep. uh, it was actually kind of inspired by that first night that we got to sit down and talk with one another. And, you know, I started forming the words in my head, just writing a kind of poetry. It starts with poetry. I started writing some poems and just kind of what he was telling me about. And then at the end of the, the festivals last summer, we had this one last date in Bulgaria. And he, I asked him, I was, I was out with him and Dan first, and we were walking through Bulgaria. It was kind of interesting. So a lot of damage from the war and stuff. And uh, I just kind of turned to Dan and was like, hey, Danny, would you want to do a song with me? And he's like, absolutely, I'd, I'd do a song with you. I think it'd be great. And I'm like, okay. So I went home and I started writing it. And the, pretty much the story of Fading Star, without giving away too much personal stuff, is it's about uh, me and Dan and our, our relationship as friends. Like, he's one of my best friends. And he, when I met Dan... Uh, it was like, uh, no offense to Oshawa, but I just don't know anybody who's as passionate about making things as big scale as I am. And I, it, I think that's what brought me to Cradle of Filth. Uh, I never felt really creatively connected with anybody like what I did with Danny. So I wrote mm-hmm. it for him as a reminder that, hey, you're a really talented guy and what you do is fantastic. And I'm not just going to let you run away from, from all this darkness. I'm going to help you get through it and we're going to get you back on track. And, and that's pretty much what Fading Star is about. If you, you can read the lyrics and you'll see there's a story. Uh, yeah, oh, there de- definitely seems like there was. Yeah, it's just, yeah, uh, yeah you know. it, it was a kind of like um, the phoenix and the dragon kind of thing because he's, you know, order the dragon and everybody calls me a phoenix. They say, you know, like, yeah, you, you're very much like you go through these things and you burn to the ashes and rise again. And that's how I kind of get a philosophy about life. I mean, we went to Taiwan together and that was what sort of inspired this theme but I mean I get my creativity from everywhere as Danny says I get my creativity from all aspects of everything and it's good you need that because that's how you create you your own to. stories yeah you can be influenced by so many different uh, folklore and fairy tale but at the end of the day it's your own personal story and experience and I never really appreciated Cradle of Filth or Danny's lyrics until I joined the band and now I understand him and it's just such a cool thing 